Now let's look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. O oh, foolish Galatians. So Paul calls the Galatians fools. Now, just a quick side note. Some people teach that you cannot say the word fool. And you'll hear me say that a little bit, or maybe sometimes quite often online. I'll say, you know, fool, fool. And there are some people who will say that I'm damned, I'm going to burn in hell because Matthew chapter 5 says you cannot call a person a fool. Well, Paul says right here, O oh, foolish Galatians. Yeah, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. What you've got to understand this is that that verse that they're quoting from Matthew 5, if you believe in dispensationalism, that's why you have to be a dispensationalist. Amen. That's why in Matthew chapter 5, it's applied to a different time period. Yes, sir. It's for the millennium when God sets up his kingdom. Why is that? Because in the millennium, there are no bad guys there. Everyone's a good guy. So you have to treat each other well. You can't call each other, hey, fool, hey, fool, you can't say that. Because we're all happy, we're nice, we all get along with each other. It's not preachers uh, calling out each other fool for heresy, false doctrine, and sin. No, we all get along. I mean, that's what the world wanted all this time anyways, right? Yeah. Hey, stop picking on each other. Let's all get along. Let's all love each other. Well, we finally get that world at the millennium. Yeah, we finally get that world at the millennium. You're not getting it now because you tolerate sin. That's why. Until sin's kicked out, then we can start getting along with each other. Amen. So, O foolish Galatians, verse 1, why are they fools? Who hath bewitched you? Yeah. Ah, so some, somebody bewitched them. Somebody cursed them. Somebody fooled them on what? That ye should not obey the truth. So, they're not, so they didn't obey the truth. The truth of the what? The truth of the gospel. Remember back at, let's see right here, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. See that? So there are Galatians who have been bewitched or are cursed not to follow the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth. Okay, so this is what Paul said. In front of your eyes, Jesus Christ was very evident to you. So you have no excuse. So who bewitched you? Who tricked you? When, when before, Jesus Christ, the truth of the gospel, was so evident in front of you, evidently set forth, crucified among you, the verse says, as if Jesus Christ was crucified right in front of them. Because remember, I do not frustrate the grace of God, if righteousness come by the works of the law, Christ is dead in vain. See, So because we understood the crucifixion, Jesus dying in front of us, we understand this evidence so plainly as if Jesus Christ did it right in the nose on your face. Who tricked you? I'll tell you who tricked you. Lordship, salvation, smart mouth, Calvinists. I'll tell you who tricked you. Catholic apologists, Seventh-day and Jehovah Witness smart mouthers who've been in the habit of talking to so many people. That's how you get bewitched. You get bewitched through those kind of people. But in the Bible, it's so evident. It's so evident. Jesus Christ died in your place. Do you remember the truth of the gospel, friend, where God just made it so plain and so simple in front of you that you are without excuse? So then who tricked you, huh? Who bewitched you? That is very strange. So Paul called it bewitched as if it was connected to the occult and Satanism. Now, what is very interesting is this, is that Paul, what he's trying to focus on is that he's trying to focus on Galatians being tricked by Judaism. So Judaism. Now, whether you believe it or not, you got to realize this. Judaism is not the true Judaism of the Old Testament Bible. It's not even Old Testament, you got to understand. There's a lot of it that was mingled with paganism. And yes, occult practices. That's what you're going to realize. Oh, pastor, how dare you? They're God's chosen people. Well, don't you think God's chosen? doesn't matter. Even if you're God's chosen people, you're saying that God's own chosen people won't fall into the occult somewhere? Yeah. Of course, all right? Even Christians, even a say Bible-believing Christian can fall into some kind of occultic pagan practice. Yeah. So you got to realize that fact. It doesn't matter if you're God's chosen people. It doesn't make you immune. So the thing is this, is that the nation of Israel, that's why Jesus Christ, he told them that 
they disobey the scriptures to go by their own traditions. If you know the history of the 400 years of silence, this is a matter of fact history. The Pharisees and Sadducees, that kind of system, that was not set up by God. Did you ever see in the Old Testament, there's a Pharisee group, uh, excuse me, Pharisee. There's a, they are Pharisees, but anyway. Pharisee and Sadducees. Did you ever see that in the Old Testament? When, when did they create this kind of group, huh? That's very strange. A lot of it is Babylonian paganism. After the exile, uh, the Babylonian exile, they took a lot of the paganism with them. I don't know if you knew that. So there was a lot of occult practices mixed in with it. As a matter of fact, even liberal schools, and I studied at Berkeley, they even taught that all this kind of stuff you're reading about uh, the Jews, what they wrote in the Old Testament, a lot of it you can find that matches, uh, this is what the Babylonians taught. Why do they say that? They claim that because they know the Jews borrowed a lot of their teachings from Babylon. Why do you think that God's going to burn down Babylon later in the end times? Why do you think that the Catholic symbols and the Jewish synagogue symbols, they all have similar symbols with each other? See, it's all Babylon. It's all Babylon. You got to understand that fact. Oh, Babylon is Jerusalem. No, no, no. That you're looking, that it's not that. Babylon is a spiritual entity that affects all kinds of different groups. If you want to get physical and secular what city it is, it's Rome if you read Revelation 17. It's plain as day. It's Rome. Okay, but anyways, let's continue reading right here. So we see that bewitching right here, that Paul accuses this Judaism as, as being satanic or uh, being occult. It's like the occult. And that's no surprise because there's a lot of similarities with Ju Judaism with occult stuff. Now look at verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Okay, so Paul is like, like begging them. He's like asking them. He's like, look, this is all that I want to know from you. That's what he's, he's saying right here. Okay, know of them, learn of them, what? Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law. Okay, remember the time when you received the Holy Spirit, Church of Galatia? Did you get it by the works of the law or by the what? Hearing of faith. Look at the Gentiles who received the Spirit of God throughout the Bible. Not Jews, I'm talking about Gentiles. If you want to jump to Acts 2.38, oh, these people got baptized to receive the Holy Ghost. Those were Jews. Look at Gentiles. When Peter started to work on Gentiles at Acts 10, how did they receive the Holy Spirit? It was through faith. So Paul's trying to tell them, when you all received the Holy Spirit, remember back then? Was it through keeping the Sabbath, observing the things of Judaism, or was it by faith? It was faith. So we got to remember that fact. That's how we receive the Holy Spirit. So uh, my question then is this, is that if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, why do you insist on keeping the law then? Because Paul's asking you a question. Do you remember how you received the Holy Spirit? Was it by the works of the law or by faith? If you're a Seventh-day Adventist because they keep changing their doctrines, they will say this. They will admit this. They will admit, I received the Holy Spirit by faith, not by the Ten Commandments, not by the law. They have to say that. Otherwise, if they say the law, then you caught them for teaching works for salvation. So Seventh-day Adventists don't want to say that. So believe it or not, this is kind of hard to believe, but there are some Seventh-day Adventists who are saved. The reason why is because they keep changing their doctrines. Yeah. yeah. But if you look at the religion itself, especially their founder, Ellen G. White, they are not saved. The religion is not a saved Christian religion. The founder definitely is not a saved Christian woman. So... Ask this question to people who, who can't deny faith, that that's how they receive the Holy Spirit, and then ask them that rhetorical question from Paul, then why do you keep the works of the law then? Because Paul's asking this question, what's the point of the works of the law then? If you receive the Spirit to begin with by faith, then shouldn't it just be faith? Why do you have to include the law all of a sudden? Let's read verse 3. Are ye so foolish? So Paul says fool twice again. Okay, why are the Galatians foolish? So you can ask this question to Seventh-day Adventists. Seventh-day Adventists, they can tend to be a little smart-mouthy because they study a lot of the scriptures, even if you don't. Come on. All right, they, look, they quote a lot of scripture. So when they act like they know more scripture than you, then you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> they got to realize this. they got to realize that they're actually being fools, not smart. Yeah. Not scriptural, they're being foolish. Yeah. How dare you say it? No, 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 you have a beef with Paul. 
Paul was, he was slamming the works of the law. And he was just focusing on faith right here. And he calls it foolish. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Yeah, that's true. It's matching with verse 2. How did you receive the Holy Spirit? Remember verse 2? How did you begin? Was it the Ten Commandments? Was it Sabbath or was it faith? Faith, right? So then why do you change all of a sudden? See, that doesn't make sense. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Now, this verse is a great verse, Galatians 3.3. 3. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? So Galatians chapter 3, verse 3, it says this. Okay, now let's make this simple. This is going to be good against nearly all religions and smart mouth Calvinists and Lordship Salvation. This is really good. And street preachers who are for sinless perfection. This is a really good verse. Okay, now let me ask you a, a simple question. When you got saved to begin with, like Paul said, when you begun, how did you get saved? By faith, right? All right, we all agree with that. It's not by works, yes? Yeah, it's not by works. And lordship salvationists and sinless perfection people will agree with you. Okay, it's not by works to begin with. This is the beginning, right? Now, lordship salvation, what do they teach? You, they teach this. If you have begun, if you got saved at the beginning by faith, there should be works that come out of here that should come out next what did Paul say if you be gone in the spirit which is by faith verse 3 are ye now made what perfect by the flesh so then now you're saying that oh so now I'm perfecting my faith with works that's what Lordship salvation teaches you have real faith you have genuine faith when you have works no Paul said no you don't perfect this this doesn't come after that. If you begun in faith, guess what? It ends in faith. If you begun in faith, it ends in faith. It doesn't come after. This is a great verse against lordship salvation. So I highly recommend you to know this verse, Galatians 3.3. 3. So lordship salvation teaches, well, you know, when you have faith, then work's supposed to show. And they use James chapter 2. So go to James chapter 2. Look at James chapter 2. James chapter 2. So today, some of our brethren, they were doing visitation. There's this person saying, well, you know, when you, if you're saved by faith, then you're supposed to have works with it as well. No, this is a total contradiction. So then what you can do next time is show them Galatians 3.3 3 and show them the contradiction. Yeah. So tell them this. Well, it doesn't matter how you interpret James 2. It seems to, the very wording, the wording exactly contradicts Galatians 3.3. 3. Yeah. Let me show you how it contradicts wording. You ready? James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being what? Alone. Now remember, Paul was insisting, you know, if you begin, it ends here, right? There's, not, there's no works after it, correct? So this seems to contradict, but let's keep reading here. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. So faith without works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. So my real faith will have works in it. So that's what James is insisting here. Let's see right here, verse 22. Doesn't this co contradict Galatians 3.3? 3? Look at this. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by what? Works was faith made perfect. Did you see that? James was plainly teaching faith and works here for salvation. If you don't want to say faith and works for salvation because you're a lordship salvationist, lordship salvationists, they prefer to use, no, 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 it's faith alone. We believe faith alone, faith alone. But if it's a real faith alone, it has works that show out of it. No, this verse says right here that works does not even perfect your faith. Remember Galatians 3.3, 3, if you begin with faith, why do you insist the works are there to perfect your faith? Isn't that a contradiction? Mm -hmm. That's a plain contradiction. There's no Alexandrian metaphorical interpretation. You can weasel your way out of that one. 
A lot of people weasel their way out of James 2. You know what we are? We just take the verse as it says. Amen. Let's just be honest, okay? Let's not weasel, okay? Amen. Let's just be honest. Yes, sir. Let's be honest that even an atheist and a liberal will agree with us on this plain interpretation. Mm -hmm. That there is a contradiction right here. <laughs> there is a contradiction. Works perfect your faith. James. Faith is not perfected by works. Paul. That's a contradiction. Now, what do we do? We just take the verse as it says. So, what is James saying? He's speaking to who? James chapter 1 verse 1. 12 tribes of Israel. James chapter 5 verse 3. It's the tribulation time period. So these are Jews in the tribulation. That's why it matches with Revelation chapter 14 verse 12 where tribulation saints have the faith and keep the commandments. That makes sense, see? By taking the words exactly as it says, then you can fit it at the right kind of doctrine that flows smoothly and there's no contradiction. Paul, in Galatians 3.3, 3, he was speaking to Christians, to the church today. This has no application to the tribulation whatsoever. Let's look at Galatians 3 again. So this is a great verse to use against people who teach lordship salvation. So use Galatians 3.3. 3. There is no way that, oh, if you have genuine faith, we are going to see your works. No, 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 no. Paul was condemning that. He was condemning that. He was saying if you go here, then you're being enslaved back to the works again. It's not a genuine faith. Okay, Galatians chapter 3, verse 4. Have ye suffered so many things in vain? So Paul's saying, so guess what? All the suffering that you went through was for nothing. If it be yet in vain, if we insist that the faith is vain. So think about this, friends. If you believe that this teaching, this faith, is wrong, and that there are some sort of works for this, then think about this. And what was the point with all the Christians who bled and died? What was the point of all the sufferings that you went through? Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this question. This is a very good uh, practical application. Why? What's the point of going back to the world, still staying stuck in your worldly thing and your sinful thing, after all the suffering that you went through working in this church? Amen. Do you want to waste it all? All those past years that you've kicked your flesh and that you served Jesus Christ, you helped out in this church, is it all for nothing? So then why go back to the old man, huh? The sinful ways or the world. If you think that now practically we can see that. As for doctrinally right here, the application is, is if we believe works do count for salvation, then what was the point of all the suffering that we early Christians went through? Hey, think about this. Why do you think that those Christians were martyred and tortured by the Catholic Inquisition so brutally? if they believed works counted for salvation. They believed faith. Martin Luther was so strong that he said faith alone. He had the five solas over there. Uh, in fact, in his Luther Bible, <clears throat> in German, where it says the just shall live by faith, that's translated in English as the just shall live by faith. But in German, how he translated it was by faith alone. That's what he wrote it as when he translated it. So they strongly believed in that. What was the point of all the bloody martyrs, uh, the burning at the stake, being tortured by the Catholic Church, if they, did not, if they did not believe faith for salvation, not by works? Do you know why they were tortured by the Catholic Church? Because they disagreed with their salvation plan. Amen. All that work system. You know, the, all the Protestants and the Catholics should go back into one fold, one shepherd again. Why is there so much division? No, we should keep that division. Because what was the point then of all the suffering we went through from the, from the horror of revelation the Catholic Church? Amen. And there are these Lutherans who are going back to the Roman Catholic Church. There are different denominations, United Methodist, Pentecostal, Episcopalian, even Baptist. Yeah, Baptist. Going, trying to compromise with the Catholic Church. Going back. Hey, what was the point then of all those hundreds of years of torture, huh? Yeah. Today's Laodicean Christians are the greatest disgrace who slapped our previous ancestors of Bible believers. Amen. We're the greatest evidence of where we slapped all of them. And there were, you got to realize this, there were even little children, friends, yeah. who were tortured with their feet on the stalks and burnt at the stake. 
when you fail to come to soul winning, when you fail to read your Bible, when you fail to stand up boldly for Jesus Christ. That will preach right there. So it's a good question to ask yourself concerning what we teach and preach. Then what's the point of all the suffering we went through, huh? If, it's, if what we teach and preach is for nothing. Think about all the things that you did in this church as well. Your life as a Bible-believing Christian. How many of you have been, lived your life as a Bible-believing Christian for several years now, huh? Then, what, then what's the point then of going back and skipping church and never coming back again? What's the point of giving up on God and not falling on your knees to pray when you get bitter and mad at God? What's the point of stopping soul winning now, stopping passing out tracts? Then what was the point of all those years that you lived as a Bible believer? Was that all for nothing? Look back at your beginning. That's why Jesus Christ saying, don't forget your first love, first love, first love. Because we've forgotten. You forgot your passion and zeal for the Lord, huh, back then? All right, so I'm not going to preach, but that's a great sermon right here at Galatians 3, 4. Okay, let's look at Galatians 3, 5 now. <clears throat> He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit. So God ministers. He's the one who gives the Holy Spirit. And worketh miracles among you. God worked the miracles. Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did he do it by, because of the works of the law? Or did he do it by the hearing of faith? So we know that God's the one who gives us the Holy Spirit, but in verse 5, it's actually more applied to a normal person. It's to a preacher. The reason why is because you look at the second part of verse 5, worketh miracles among you. So there were people who were doing miracle workings. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Bible says the Holy Spirit gives diversities of gifts, working of miracles, and that's to people in the church. So this is a question that's actually about a person or a preacher. So in verse 5, he, some preacher, that ministereth to you the Spirit, if he's the one who is responsible for your salvation, who gave you the Holy Spirit, and worketh miracles among you. He did a lot of miracles to you. Now during the age of the apostles, that's why they're called apostolic signs. Apostolic signs. Why? Because those miracle workings were only for the apostles. <clears throat> so then the apostles, when they did their miracles... Think about this. Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did they do it because of salvation by works or salvation by faith? Think about that. Think about all the miracles that the apostles did. They did all that and they gave the Holy Spirit and it was all based on salvation by faith, not by works. So then when the Catholic Church teaches you that, oh, we reverence these apostles and Peter's the founder of the church and then blessed be the apostle Paul, etc., Tell them this, no, the apostles are definitely not the founders of your church. Yeah. Because these apostles, when they did their miracles, they did their ministry, it was by the hearing of faith, not by the works of the law. Amen. So you point that out. Galatians and Romans are the two strongest books Amen. that was most loved by Martin Luther and well hated by the Catholic Church because Romans and Galatians were the two books that just crushed good works for salvation. Just slap good works for salvations there. So think about this. When Christianity started, if you will ever think in your mind, if you're going to ever think in your mind that there, might, there should be some works for salvation, then think about this. Your whole Christian faith is in vain because the foundation of the apostles, it did not start like that. Your salvation, when you got saved by the Holy Spirit, did not start like that either. Amen. 